Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How wonderful it is to be with you and thank you for joining me. This is going to be Christian Universalism series number three. We're going to begin to get into the scriptures uh, that speak of this. Some of the scriptures speak of it in general. Some of the scriptures that we're going to mention speak of it very specifically. But all of them at least allude to the character and nature of God, that He is all-loving, all-powerful, all-inclusive in the fullness of time through the Lord Jesus Christ. But before we do that, I wanted to read this quote from George Houghton. He has a quote here. Uh, it's a passage. And he is peeling the paint off of the wall so to speak, and really goes down to the sheetrock and then all the way down to the stud where there's nothing but bare stud left when he's done. He is uh, outlining here the absolute utter asininity and stupidity of the doctrine of eternal torture when you really consider it uh, against who God is, his character and nature in the Holy Scriptures. So, going to read this quote, which will no doubt uh, stir us all up and then break the ice. And then we're going to get on into these scriptures that speak of the ultimate restoration of all things through Jesus Christ. It's so important that you know this because the holy scriptures absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, teach this, that God is the Savior of all men in the fullness of time through Jesus Christ. But here are the words from George Halton. Buckle your seatbelt. Make sure your airbags are working. Uh, here we go. The following words by George Halton are most challenging. The established visible church has preached its multiplied sermons, seeking to prove its tradition that the vast majority of God's human creation will be lost finally, irrevocably, and eternally, and not only will they be lost to God forever and ever, but they will be given up to the most sadistic, inhuman, ungodly torments that could be devised by the vilest fiends. According to the tradition of the church, this hellish torment is to fall upon all who do not believe. It matters not a whit whether they had an opportunity to believe or not. It matters not at all if they were born in the darkest jungles of Africa, the swamps of Borneo, or the deserts of India or China. The fact that they never heard there was a God will be no excuse whatever. The fact that they never heard that God had a son will not impede their dreadful destruction. Heathen who never heard that God had a son are, according to this teaching, faced with the same dreadful doom as men who heard the gospel from their birth and yet rejected it. To add to the stupidity of their teaching, they make pitiful attempts to prove that this is the justice of God and that God is manifesting his love in the punishment of sin. The doctrine of eternal punishment is based on a literal interpretation of some of the metaphors of Scripture to the complete neglect of many other scriptures. No doctrine has ever been propounded with more confidence and greater bitterness, nor with a grossness and coarseness more hideous and repugnant, and in the face of the love and kindness of God, more inconceivable and incredible. End quote. George Halton. Think about it. Now we're going to get into uh, some of these scriptures here. Pray about these scriptures. Meditate on these scriptures. Ask God to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hear the underlying tone of what is being said about the character and nature of our heavenly father. That he includes everyone ultimately. Yes, he's going to deal with sin and rebellion and evil and wickedness and unrighteousness and all of that. It's all going to get dealt with. But you got to understand 
that God's judgments are for the purpose of correction to teach people righteousness. His wrath, vengeance, destruction, judgment, punishment, fire, hell, the lake of fire. Did I say torment? I think I did. All of these things are for the purpose of correction. Correction, ladies and gentlemen. God is a lover. He's a corrector. He's our Father. He will lose no one in the fullness of time. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee, here's the promise now, this is a sovereign declaration of Almighty God, a promise, an unconditional promise. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All of the families of the earth are ultimately going to be blessed in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis 18, 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. How many nations are going to be blessed? All the nations. Do we see all the nations blessed in God right now? No. But it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. God's kingdom is coming to this earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the kingdom will take over everything, every nation. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Genesis 22, 17 through 18, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. There it is again. All the nations of the earth will be blessed. Because of what God has done in sending His Son to be the Savior of the world. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 26, 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. There it is again. All the nations of the earth will be blessed. Hallelujah. Genesis 28, 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. There it is again. All the families of the earth will be blessed. All nations will be blessed. Hallelujah. This is a big plan that God is bringing to pass. He's not going to lose the vast majority of the human race as most of Christianity teaches. As a matter of fact, he's not going to lose anything. All the families of the earth are going to be blessed. All the nations are going to be blessed. Exodus 19.5 Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Let that sink in. All of the earth belongs to God. It's his possession. Not only is he the creator and he owns everything in that sense because he's the creator of everything, but then it says we were purchased, we were bought with a price through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the earth is God's. Well, guess what God's going to do with his possession? He's going to save it, reconcile it, redeem it, correct it, forgive it, and restore it. All the earth is God's. And he's not going to lose what is his. Get that. He's all loving. He's all powerful. Numbers 14, 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. 
All the earth's going to be filled with the glory of the Lord. Right now, some of it is the people that are calling on the name of the Lord that are living for Him. They're filled with His glory. But there's coming a day when all the earth is going to be filled with the glory of the Lord. You've got to see this afar off. You can see afar off by partaking of the divine nature, Peter said. See afar off and stop just looking at your little old puny little world right now. You've got to have faith and believe that God's able to do this. All the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Number 16, 22. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? But the point of that scripture is he is the God of the spirits of all flesh. He owns all flesh. He owns the earth. He owns the families. He owns the nations. He owns you. He owns me. He's the creator. He's the redeemer. And he has paid it all, paid it in full. So the question that needs to be asked is, if he's paid it all, which Christians sing these songs all the time, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Well, if he paid it all, is he going to get everything that he paid for? And I tell you, the answer is yes. Hallelujah.